you know, on issues affected women? Um, I've seen that women are key partners in any development. And for any development to be sustainable, if you left out women, um, I doubt it will be sustainable. There's always a gap. Yes. So as a result of that, I have the passion to support because I've seen them as my, my, my sisters, my mothers, my aunts, and my friends. And your wives. And my wife, of course, <laughs> to be. So th th these are things that keep, move, keep me moving, right? Um, if you look at women issues and you empower them, you're amazed the kind of work they can do. So that keeps me moving. Okay, um, we've, we've seen a whole lot of um, youth organizations or individuals in the Gambia saying that we are all um, women advocates or we advocate, um, we advocate when it comes to the protection of the rights of children, we advocate when it comes to the protection of the rights of women, but all they do is make noise. How, how uh, do you think or what do you think could be done in ensuring that actions tangible actions that are taken and making sure that the information gets to the women at the grassroots level? Uh, we must practically involve women in whatever we are doing. Um, I belong to a whole lot of organizations and one organization that is very unique in the way they do things is Think Young Women. Mm -hmm. um, I've been part of the founding members of this organization that is women-led, young women taking the lead, uh, building the leadership capacity of young women, mm -hmm. uh, supporting them to build their confidence, empowering them and all that not, you know, using different, different forms. Um, that is one practical way of involving women. We cannot say women empowerment, women leadership, when we did not give them the space. A lot of organizations here, a lot of uh, youth organizations, to, to be precise, here will, will talk about their advocacy when it comes to, or their activism when it comes to women empowerment and all that not. But are they are they involving them? Many times you see them in assistant positions, assistant secretary, assistant president, here and there. Why are they not giving them the leadership position to be president, for instance, in their organizations? And this is the gap that I think young women came to close, right? And we also need to meet the young people to learn from their stories, right? Uh, we having a campaign that we started some time ago, and uh, part of the campaign is to involve young men to be able to address the issue of violence against women and other women's rights issues, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we started first with some media outreaches to programs, talk to people, mm -hmm. media programs. Uh, we also organized for the first time, you know, Young Men Forum. Young Men Forum? Yes. Perhaps you'd like to throw more light on that. Yes. The Young Men Forum was an activity that University of the Gambia Students Union, Think Young Women, and the Youth Action Movement decided to come together um, to bring young men in particular for them to talk about violence against women. Why do they think men perpetuate violence against women? Um, what solutions can we come up with to address the issue? And also learn from the young girl that is being violated. Mm -hmm. Learn from her story. So you're able to relate because you then know the reality. It's not like a storytelling. But somebody who is either being raped, somebody who is being abused at, 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 at school or office or somewhere else. So they learn from their stories. That is what we do. And we don't want to stop the campaign there. We want to go beyond that level, right? Um, after the Young Men Forum, we want to also go on what we call the bike. Bike. Yes. As in yes. Bike. You get a cycle, <laughs> and, and, and you will bike from, from one end of the Gambia to the other end, from Karton to Koina. Going from one major community to another, letting them know that uh, violence against women it's not something that's supposed to be done. How can we prevent it? You get to young men and listen to their solution as to how we can solve it. Because we're the men who are involved. We're the ones who do it. Mm -hmm. So what solutions can we come up with? Right? And we also gather signatures, whereas uh, they will commit not to uh, uh, perpetuate violence against women and girls. Signing petitions? Petitions. Mm -hmm. And this we intend to bring it to the National Assembly and give it to them to say, we'll want you to uh, put up more strict laws to be able to address these issues but, of violence. But, but like, don't, don't you think uh, that the Women's Act is enough? Um, yes, the Women's Act is, is, is a good instrument. But we need other, other laws to be in, in place. For instance, uh, laws on gender-based violence, violence, specifically. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, when we have that, there are other issues that are not being addressed in the women's bill that could be addressed by that. 
Okay. Yeah. I think that's indeed a very, very good initiative. But um, talking about campaigns, uh, there is one that uh, Think Young Women, as well as you, you know, is, is, is this um, coming to embark on. Perhaps you would just like to tell us what um, particular campaign this one really is and what it entails. Um, as I said, um, at, at Think Young Women, um, if you look at the organization, it's only myself and Said Party who are, who are the guys, and the rest are women. And that, that surprised a whole lot of people. They are like, okay, why do you have, you say, Think Young Women and you have guys among? But we have passion for the work. And we want to make sure we post that. Um, part of the many activities we or campaign we're doing is the the Wear Orange campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, the UN Secretary General um, Unite to End Violence Against Women and Girls campaign um, have an initiative that is every month the 25th of every month is proclaimed as Orange Day, where uh, people wear orange to take a stand against violence against women and girls. Right, they, they take a stand to say, uh, I don't want uh, you to commit or to, to violate women or a girl, or I will not do it. If you wear orange uh, and a whole lot of people wear it around you, it will raise an alarm. People begin to question, why are we wearing orange? Mm -hmm. And then that's another way of raising awareness. awareness. And uh, this has started since July last year. Is that, is, is that the reason why you're wearing orange today? <laughs> <laughs> yes, most <laughs> definitely because um, I want to talk about the orange day, so I decided to wear orange. And I've promised that from July uh, up to March when the, the CSW will be held, I'll be wearing orange every 25th. 25th. It started in July last year, 20, 2012. And every month, uh, 25th of, of, of the month, uh, people wear orange. But, but how, how, how known is, is, is that? Because to be very much honest with you, this, this is an entirely new initiative to me. Yes, a lot of people don't know it. Um, I've tried at my own level and of course with my colleagues uh, to raise awareness. That's why today we're on the Changemaker so to let people know about it. Uh, many times when it is a week before the event, I send emails out. You know, I write on, on Facebook, I write on other social medias to let people know that they need to wear orange, orange on the 25th On the twenty fifth of every month. And uh, this is why we're here today. We want to let people know that 25th of um, January is coming. Uh, we need to wear orange. We need to brand our, our organization, so our office complex, orange. You know, let us wear orange and we will come around. Personally, myself, I'll go to some key institutions, particularly those who are looking at um, gender issues or women's rights issues. I'll go to their office and see whether they embrace this day. Mm -hmm. Whether they, uh, they, you know, and we'll take the photos and share with uh, the, the, the campaign that's the Unite uh, to End Violence uh, Against, against women, women and girls. campaign. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll share with them at the global level. I know, I know there are certain institutions, there's no need to go there because yeah. they are orange <laughs> <laughs> every day. Yeah, they <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. um, um, just, just uh, this, this is an issue that I always like talking about. Um, you can never talk about violence against women without, without talking about the abuse that they face themselves, and key among them is the issue of rape. But uh, in, in, in recent years, we've seen an increase in rape cases in the Gambia, especially, you know, within the Greater Banjul and, you know, the up country. And when you talk about rape, you know, people say that you're not supposed to blame the victim. It's never the fault of the victim. But most people tend to swear away from that and say that the victims have to be blamed because of the way that they address the dress code. So perhaps you'd just like to share your thoughts on the issue of rape linking it to dress code. Firstly, um, dress code, that is not dress code that is wrong, I'm lying. Seriously? Yes. It's about where you wear it. Good, but, but like, how would you feel if you see a girl wear, wearing a bikini and walking in the streets? Well, th that is where the wrong dress code comes in. Great. Because bikinis are not we meant for, for people to wear and walk on the, uh, you know, around and all of that. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Um, the other thing is, we cannot use that as any reason. Right? We cannot use dress code to say that is the reason why we are doing this. You follow newspapers, you follow the news. You know exactly that most of the people who are, are being raped sometimes are even under 10 years. Definitely true. So you cannot tell those people this because of their dress code. So, so, then, so then what, what would you say is, is the factor or the reason behind uh, we having a whole lot of rape cases in the Gambia recently? Um, I think people are... I don't know how would I, what, what word would I best use. Would you want to say that there are some people that just can't control their emotions? Yes, 
To be precise, that, 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 that is what I would say. Um, I think people don't control their emotions or they, cannot, they, they don't want to control their emotions, emotions. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then you 